Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There is a very old uh, Jewish nigun that I really like to, to sing with you together. What? What's the question? What? What's the question marks all over the place? It's not a Jewish Negro. It's a Jewish theme. What? It's not so Jewish? No, I guess I'm not that Jewish. Oh, maybe you're not posted. <laughs> maybe they didn't let you know. There is a big war between the dark side to the light. And we must join the rebels. We must join the rebels because faith and trust in the existence of good in this creation is our only hope. Now, something is happening in the world and there are big changes in the world. And to the guys that were running the show for years and years and years, it feels a little bit not comfortable to see all those mushrooms popping up after the rain, all those balechuva and new age spiritual mentors that are finding their ways to the front stage with spiritual experiences and with deep spiritual understandings, kind of putting the old tradition in the dark. But how can we ignore the spiritual experiences and the depths of our clarity on how clear it is for us and understandable it is for us that the Creator is literally communicating with us and reaching out to us and calling us from within. How can we drop that to follow other people's fear and to be forced to drop our dream when we know that our dream is innocent and pure and, and good. So the answer is clear that we're not supposed to. And people I once met, I knew him, a very good friend of mine that died, he was a singer. He passed away a few years ago and he had the dream for several years to, to complete, to finish another album. But financially it was very hard for him. We know that many people that are many artists and, and music um, players and, and musicians, they desire to to come out to the world with, with their art, with their music, and financially it's, it's not easy. And for years he was struggling, and after a few years of dreaming and hoping and trying again and, and, and retrying again and again, over and over, in one day he gave up and he said, no, it's, it's not going to happen. And he started from that day and on, and it was a very clear um, thing to see 
that he started losing his mind from the sorrow, from the pain of, of not being able in his mindset to, to make that dream come true. And he fell to a very deep depression and sadness and started having pains. And after three to four months, they found tumors all over his body. And he died after less than another month or two after from that cancer, from that disease. And one day, one night actually, after a few months, a few friends that knew him, we met another musician, a very talented guy that knew that knew our friend as well. And he asked us if we know what happened with him, why, how he suddenly got that disease and how he, he died so fast. So one of my friends told him that he think that it was because that he didn't complete his album. That's what, that what was his thought. So that other person, the musician, the talented one, he said, you know, I saw many, many, many people that the fact that they gave up on their art and the sadness that attacked them just destroyed their lives because they gave up on their dreams. When I heard it, it was very clear for me because Hashem is saying to us, and the verse is very clear, we're saying, Poteach et yadecha, lechol chai ratzon, that the Creator, He opens His wide and generous arms, His hands, and He gives us corresponding to our will. Poteach et yadecha, umasbiya, and satisfying us, lechol chai ratzon, to everyone what that He wants. And if you give up on your will, there is no door, there is no window, there is no access for the bounty to come. If you gave up on your will, you're a dead person. You're not alive. When there is a person sick in hospital, when you will go and visit him, how do you think you will help him to heal? That visit, what, what will, will do for him to, to help him to refresh his mind, to refresh his body? What do you think you're able to do? What will be the conversation? What you will tell him? He's very sick. What you will tell him? There is hope. Don't worry. Keep on. I'm with you. All the family are praying for you. You know all the friends are saying to heal him for you. Whatever. You're going to try to increase his desire for life because you feel inside of yourself that if he will want to hold on and to fight, he will make it. Because you know that when someone wants something, he will achieve it. There is at least the more of the option, more odds that he will make it. Because he will fight for it. Now what happened to us, and especially I can see it in the Orthodox communities, people are so busy in fighting for the religion itself, to have the ability that the youth, that the kids won't go to the army in Israel, that they will allow them to open yeshivot, that they won't tell them that they are not doing what they want to do, so they must establish the, the yeshivot, and that everyone will be able to sit and learn. And instead of fighting for the real Torah, real Torah, like the, the real righteous people of different generations, they would go and open yeshivot in, in basements, in, in, in tiny rooms. They would go and teach in their houses. And over there they were letting the flame of fire to, to wake up the spark of the Jewish soul. They would scream and they would cry and they would give their heart, their blood, to wake up the spirits of, of their surroundings, of their students, potential students, their friends, their communities, to wake them up to want Hashem. They would go and lit the fire of faith, the fire of holiness in the hearts. 
and not making sure to have institutes and fundings and support and, and recognition and whatever, all those slogans that makes only one evident to the lack of faith of the chief rabbis that are, are, are I tried to say chief rabbis and came out cheap rabbis out of my mouth. Reality, what is the mission? The mission is to make money, is to secure your future and your family future, your student future. The mission is to deliver the message, the will of Hashem, to make everyone know the Creator. The mission is to make people, from animals to make people. From people that are acting like animals, that they're not polite, that they're not nice, that they don't know how to act, how to respect, how to love, how to care, to make them sensitive human beings. That's the mission. The mission is to take people from the streets and to educate them to serve the Creator, to become one with the will of the Almighty. That's the mission. Now, the Orthodox world and I'm not being judgmental, I can swear to you on that. What that happened is that because of all the sorrow and all the pain of the exiles of thousands of years being chased and destroyed by, by different nations and enemies from within, we found ourselves so confused and so lost and terrified, so worried, that we are just working hard on protecting ourselves. Defending our position and, and, and our status and, and our financials and our security and our money and our um, 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 honor and respect and whatever that people will know and will accept. All of that negative approach of just protecting y yourself is holding us back from really being positive and delivering the news of the last generation. In years of exile, in years of war, in years of, 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 of camps uh, 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 to kill people, to kill the Jews, to, to, to kill them because of their religion, I can understand why you're being so protective. I understand, because you need to protect those people from dying. You need to protect them that they won't lose their mind. But today, when people are so thirsty, when everyone wants to hear what you have to say, that the wide world is impressed by you, by your nation, by your wisdom, by your science, by your technology, by your talents, by your abilities, by your wisdom, and everyone are surrounding you are open-minded to hear you. And there are so many ways and so many outlets to go out to the world and to spread faith and to become that light to the nations that we supposed to be, I don't see the reason to sit and defend yourself all of the time and protect yourself. It's showing only one thing, that you yourself, that defender, is terrified. That you don't have trust in the Creator. But look, look at the story of the Balet Shuva. Look what goes on in this world, in our generation. I know thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people that didn't have no connection to tradition, nothing in their houses, Jewish or not Jewish. People with no connection to faith, with no tradition, with no religious education, especially not Jewish education, that woke up and felt the existence of the Creator in their life, like me. If it happened through a drug party in the north, if it happened through a car accident, if it happened through one of the people in the family that passed away and they found themselves hearing Kaddish for the first time in their life, if it's because of one time hearing songs of Shabbat, if it's from any reason in the world something woke us up and we are thousands and thousands of people that felt that the Creator is communicating with us in our language, into our background, into our um, culture, using the slangs that we are used to, the world of concepts that we are aware of, the mother tongue that we're speaking. And all of that spiritual development is a huge, massive part 
in the reality of this generation. You have thousands of thousands of souls that are waking up. If it's Jewish people with no tradition, if it's Orthodox Jewish people that realize that they're just living on certain habits and, 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 and tradition that they're not feeling connected to and they want to try to, to find the Creator in their life and they're seeking for faith and seeking for inner answers to inner struggles and doubts that they have that the rabbis that are surrounding them and guiding them are not answering and not supplying the real answers to their real problems. And if it's Gentiles, people from different nations, that you look at them and you don't understand what in the world is going on here. Movements on movements, communities are growing and expanding in the world, in Spain, in Italy, all Europe is full with huge groups, South America, thousands, probably maybe hundreds of thousands of people searching for Judaism, searching and calling Hashem without even knowing what they're asking for. An inner desire. I went to Colombia. Soon we're going to fly to South America again to another tour. It's crazy. It's wild. We're talking about thousands of people that are coming and asking you and they're calling themselves Israelis and they're calling to themselves in names they don't understand Israelites, J Jewish, New Jewish, whatever they're making up they don't know what they're talking about they don't really have the tradition but an inner spark is already working inside of their souls to reconnect themselves to the ancient wisdom that been given to us, Jewish nation, Israel nation, 3,000 years ago. And they want it with all their hearts and they're asking to convert and they're begging to open a Beidin in, 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 in all countries, countries of the world. And begging, and I don't know what to do. I live in Venezuela, and I live in, 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 in Pakistan. We have people in Pakistan, in Afghanistan. I have students in Saudi Arabia. I have students in Dubai. People are asking questions. I have students in India. People are, you look at their faces, not Jewish. And they want Hashem and they're talking to you and telling. I have a student in India. She's telling me all of my family are Christian. Everyone are Christian. And she, the only one from childhood, she wants Hashem. How can you explain it? Everyone are Christian. Everyone are fighting with her from her childhood when she was a kid. What are you doing? What are you talking about? She wants to be Jewish. She wants her kids to learn in Jewish school. She taught them about Shabbat. She's trying to keep Shabbat. She's eating kosher. She's doing whatever she can. And the person, she's not Jewish. Christian family in an Indian country. And she loves Hashem. And she knows Hashem. And she knows that the Torah is truth. And she's not following Jesus. And she doesn't care about the idols of, of, of the foreign faiths in, in India. And her heart is a flaming fire to Hashem. What's that? How can you answer that in any other way except of understanding that the Creator is pushing forward to complete redemption. Except of a huge awakeness between the nations and between the, the, the Jewish nation that everyone are waking up from within, Spirit of Mashiach is waving above the water, hovering above the water and waking up the souls and blowing away the sadness and all gray aspects of, of our spirits and, and waking us up to come back to the real essence of our being, to be servants and believers in the Creator of the universe. And really between us, with no connection to religion at all, it's a spirit that is purifying and cleaning and cleansing the souls from their sadness and depression, from thousands of years of exile and all kinds of stupidity, 
to recognize that there is one creator above us and then what that will take place in the world will be complete redemption and the house of Hashem will become the house of prayer to all nations and everyone will come and will call him in his name and be will ha bow to him in the holy mountain in the holy city of Jerusalem in, in Zion, Betzion and the voice of Hashem will be heard and they're gonna hear the blow of Shofar in all the countries, in all the lands and it's time for redemption. Now, the worst enemy to this redemption is the orthodox sadness and depression. This is the worst enemy. They are the ones that are the most not ready for the news. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Refu no. <laughs> Sorry. Ad Khan. <laughs> Don't cross that line. Don't talk about Mashiach. Don't talk about Geula. Don't talk about Mashiach. Don't talk about Geula. Don't talk about um, re redemption. Don't make no changes. No changes. And I understand where they're coming from. But I don't need to accept that approach on my life. I understand that they are terrified. I understand that they have their patterns. I understand that they have leaders that are guiding them to keep on hiding in the shelters even after the bombs stop. I understand it. After the Holocaust, people in the Holy Land of Israel, refugees and, 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 and Holocaust survivors, were keep on holding their bread and stealing bread from the kitchen of, of the kibbutzim for years after the Holocaust finished. He's already in Israel, the war finished, he's already in Israel working, he's receiving free meals three times a day, meat and eggs and milk and chicken and, and everything he needs, vegetables with no end. He works in vegetable farms, he's driving, he's got his own house, he's married, he's got children and he's stealing bread from, from the dining room, from the kitchen. You cannot blame him. You can understand him. You're not criticizing, criticizing a person from being terrified and traumatized after being abused in the Holocaust, suffered from, from hunger for years, seeing his family dying from hunger, every single one of them, and he's the only survivor. You can understand that pattern, you can understand the psychology of this situation of that poor guy that is losing his mind because he's terrified not to find himself for a minute without bread. Okay, I understand you. For four years he didn't have one decent meal. For one year and a half in the camps he was just being abused and hurt and, and, and almost died 20 times and suffered from hunger that no one can describe, no one can understand, and no one is being judgmental on that situation. Now, to see him stealing bread from the kitchen and hiding it with no reason is not something that we cannot accept, but it's not a reason that we will go and steal bread also. To learn from him, it's not right. To understand him, yes. To love him, yes. To hug him, yes. To supply the food that will come easy for him. To ignore the fact he takes the bread. Everything is good. We can be normal and decent and nice and kind people. Understanding him. But to become like him because he's terrified? It's not a reason. Now we, me, I'm talking about myself. Ani, me. I don't owe no one anything. I don't have debts. I haven't been grew up in no traditional way. I'm an individual. I came to this world from in a secular family. My parents, they love me. They want me to grow. I'm part of the Jewish nation because Hashem made me to be a Jewish person. And I am. I served in the army. I fulfilled my obligation to my country. I did everything that I felt like I was supposed to do. I did it. But... I did it my way. So I'm obligated to my own way because I received a certain color and a certain shade and a certain character, a certain shape inside of me that it's who that Hashem made me to be. I have my style. I have my desire. I have my 
thoughts, I have my senses, I have my power, and I also have my inner sensors that are helping me to recognize the supervision of the Creator on my life. And when I recognized that he started communicating with me when I was a soldier in the army, and I felt that he went into my mind and started communicating with me because I was thinking about certain things and suddenly friends of mine would come and tell me those things. And I was looking at them like something weird is going on here. And more things happened and coincidence became to be very clear to be supervised from heaven and suddenly another occasion and another situation and another event and another coincidence and all of those things are taking place and fitting themselves into a huge puzzle that I was able through those sensors and the power of my imagination to build into an amazing puzzle that was informing inf inf informing me yeah. informing me that there is a creator that the creator is live and exists and he's running the show and when i saw that as a free sparrow free person a jewish soldier in the army i took the responsibility on myself to commit my life to serve him with no connection to rabbis or to traditional manners or, 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 or ways of, of, of behavior, I was not obligated to anything. I accepted on myself yoke of heaven because that I saw that heaven is, exists. Because that I was meditating and I was thinking, and I was talking to him, and I felt that he answered my prayers, because I saw that those things started to happen more frequently, and, 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 and in a stronger way, from one day to the next, I saw that the Creator is part of my life. So, from that place in my life, that I saw that the Creator, He loves me, and he cares about me. And he himself woke me up. Not through people. And not through rabbis. And not through obligations. He just opened my eyes to desire. And to admire. And to appreciate. And to recognize the greatness of Torah or mitzvot. Of the Holy Bible and the Holy Commandments. And out of a good will. With a happy heart. And a wishing soul, I committed myself to be observant and to keep Shabbat and to eat kosher food and to celebrate the holy days and to put filin on my arm and on my head and to go to mikveh and to keep all Torah and mitzvot to learn more from the Torah, to educate my children and, and, and to speak with my wife about those issues of faith and then to go and to share that wisdom to all of my surroundings. And I did all those things out of my innocent, good, free will that recognized the faith and the Creator in His life. So I chose that way and no one forced me to do that. So why that now... I will force myself to follow other people that I see that might be very, very wrong in many, 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 many aspects. Because I see the souls of my students and of my friends and I see huge, amazing potential inside them, flaming fire of holy desires to know Hashem and to nullify themselves completely to Him and to throw themselves with trust and with faith in Him and to pray thousands of hours of prayers and to go to Ukraine to this grave of that righteous man and to go to the Holy Land and find themselves crying for hours in front of the Western Wall or to dedicate their life to faith and to learn how to respect their wives or how to educate their children on the real traditional faith in the Creator 
Creator and to be holy and to guard their hearts and to guard their eyes and to guard their mouths. And I see those holy souls in front of me and I relate to them. I understand them. I can understand them because I'm like them even if I look a little bit different. The only reason that I look different is because that I accepted on myself to look different. To dress in a certain dressing code that belongs to a different culture, to a different tradition. Because for 12 years of my life I lived in a certain neighborhood in Jerusalem that called Beit Israel, that it's a very orthodox and from Hasidish area. And in that area, I fit into a certain yeshiva. And in that yeshiva, they dressed in a certain dressing code. And it, it, it's okay. Today, I don't care anymore. If it represents Judaism in a way, so wonderful. It doesn't mean that my students need to have side curls like mine or a beard like mine or a black vest. It doesn't do anything good for my Avodat Hashem that I'm wearing it. That I have that long beard. It doesn't help me to be a better Jewish person. I'm not who that I am because of my beard or my side curls. If you don't have side curls or you don't have a long beard, it doesn't make you wrong or not in my spiritual level. Spirituality doesn't have no connection to the length of your beard or your peot. Rahmana li babai, the creator, he wants the heart of his followers. He desires your heart. He wants to see the purity of your intention. What are you aiming when you're calling him? When you're talking to your friend? What is the thoughts that you have in the back of your mind? What is hiding inside of your heart? When you're eating, when you're talking, when you're learning, when you're speaking, when you're sleeping, when you're holding hands, when you're fighting, when you're arguing. What is really your motive in every situation? This is what the Creator is seeking from His children. To see where their heart is holding. Not when they woke up in the morning and if they bought a pair of tefillin in $1,000 or in $500. Those are not the questions that you will be questioned in Judgment Day after 120 years. The Creator will ask you, what's your name? First question. Who are you? If you're going to say Dr. Schwartz, you're going to be slapped. In, in, in 5,000 miles an hour, straight to hell. What's your name? Who are you? That's the question. Who are you? Who are you? In this world, who are you? Who are you when you're talking? Who are you when you're eating? Who are you when you're working? When you're making money? Who are you when you're praying? Who are you when you're learning Torah? Who are you when you're with your children? Who are you when you are alone in your own room, under the blanket, in darkness, when no one can see you? Who are you? What is the intention of your heart? Who you really are, that's the question. In that you should be busy, I should be busy 24 hours a day. Who am I in front of my wife? Who am I in front of my children? Who am I in front of the Creator that His eyes are looking at me to commit myself, to reconnect myself to Him, to tie myself to Him, that my heart will love Him in every situation, that I'm going to recognize Him and remember Him when I'm up and when I'm down, when I'm standing, when I'm falling, when I'm failing, when I'm succeeding, when I'm saving other people, when other people are saving me. Who am I when I'm making money, when I'm losing money, when I'm making mistakes and if I'm failing and falling and if I'm making horrible mistakes that I cannot forgive myself, do I count on the unconditional love of the Creator that He can forgive me if I want to do tshuva and to take responsibility even on the worst things of them all or that I'm too proud and arrogant not to forgive myself ever on the horrible things I did? Nonsense. To know Hashem, it's to know that every part of the creation installed inside of him a huge potential to become spiritual. A huge engine is running this world 
to connect us to the real source of our life, the Creator Himself. Who are you? You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue because you still don't have complete faith in the Creator Himself. That He is above Torah and Mitzvot. That He is above rabbis. That He is above the size of the Holy Land and its location in the Mizrach HaTichon. It's not it. It's the inner spiritual connection of a child to his Father in Heaven. Of a creation to the Creator Himself. Like that the chicken, the rooster, the deer, the porcupine, the, 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 the grass, the dogs, all of them are singing to Hashem. The frog, the dove, the eagle, everyone are singing to the Creator. Where are you? To who you sing? What are you singing? So let me hear your song. Hashem is asking. I want to hear your song. The frog, I hear him. The eagle, I hear him. The deer, I hear him. You, what is your song? You know what's going to be your song? Your song going to be the song that you will sing when you will believe in yourself and start singing. And before you'll sing, you don't have no song. You think you need to be a dancer to dance? No, you just need to dance. And if you feel that your dance is stupid, it's only because you don't understand how joyful it is for the Creator to see you when you're happy. You give up on your happiness because you give importance to lousy people that are criticizing the way you dance. You know why you give them honor and respect? Because you don't respect yourself. Because you don't respect the Creator, that He is above all human beings, that He is the only one that you need to count and care. And He guides you in the most wisest and, 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 and purest guidings of them all to love everyone and to respect everyone and to care about everyone. And to understand that you have a purpose. And your purpose is to love Hashem and not to be afraid of Him. You should love Hashem with everything you have. With all your power, with all your spirit, with all your money, with all your talents, with all your abilities, and even with your evil inclination. Even when you're falling to your lust and your desires, even in your evil inclination, you must find a way to love Hashem. To remind yourself that that kind of pleasure that you felt right now, even though that it came from a filthy source, even though that it's a result of your failure into your evil inclination's arm, even if you know for a fact that it's a sin, that it's a mistake, remind yourself that there is no pleasure in this world at all, except of when the Creator is sending His messengers, His holy angels to pleasure you and satisfy you and the Creator can choose to satisfy you even from horrible things and it doesn't mean that they are good it means that the Creator he's got mercy and compassion on you even when you're a broken vessel even when you're shaky even when you're down the love of the Creator to his creation is an unconditional love there is no pleasure in this world unless the Creator decided to pleasure you and satisfy you. So from your embarrassment, from your shame, to receive pleasure in such low place, love Hashem and be grateful to Hashem and look for your way how to fix yourself and do tshuva. Come back to Him and tell Him, I'm sorry. I'm apologizing for my mistake, for my failure, for my downs, for my horrible crush. But thank you. 
for giving me a reason to live and helping me to work on myself. Thank you for opening my eyes to do tshuva. To do tshuva, it's to come back to faith. It's not to be religious. It's to come back to faith. To come back to Hashem. To Hashem's will. For an example. For an example. If a person now wants to do something in Kedusha, holy thing, and he finds it too hard for him to do, for an example, he's talking with his wife. Both of them never kept single one Shabbat in their life. Ever, never kept Shabbat. But he googled one time something inspiring. Words of hope. Reason to live. And suddenly he saw Rav Dror speaking on YouTube. And then he listened to that lecture and he liked it. He said, you know what? Even though I feel not so related to his look, not so related to what that he represents, whatever, feeling very far, but something in his words touched my heart. I want to hear it again. And then in the next day, he heard another lecture. I have a student that told me, from the day that I heard you, I heard over 1,000 lectures of you. And you know when was the first one I heard? He said, four months ago. And in those four months, I heard over 1,000 lectures of yours. He heard short ones and long ones. And he heard and heard and heard. He couldn't take himself away from the screen. Not because of me. Because that his soul been let in fire. Because suddenly he found his soul. <clears throat> Today I received an email from a person in South America. He said, for years I was seeking for a mentor, for a teacher that will guide me in the path of truth. And you're that one. It's not because of me. It's because that he is seeking for years to find the truth. And he recognized the truth when he heard it. I'm also lucky to be part of that thing. Now that person, he googled some inspiring content and he fell into my loving arms and I hugged him through my videos and he found hope and, 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 and desire for life and he found it in the old tradition of Judaism. And he wants now to keep Shabbat and he shared that information with his wife and she's okay with it but to change her lifestyle she doesn't feel at all connected to it now he wants to start keeping shabbat and he doesn't know how to do that even and his wife she is rejecting she's fighting a little bit she doesn't know what will be the next craziness of her husband one time he wanted to buy a yacht one time he wanted to move to another country now he wants to do tshuva and to become orthodox Okay, like I hear you, there are good things in heat, at least one day a week to rest. I understand, I hear you, but she's not so sure. So now, he wants to be observant, he wants to keep Shabbat. What is the rule? What's the halacha? What should he do? What should he do? I think he should wait. That's my answer. Ask me, what should I do? I think he should wait. But I want to keep Shabbat. It's the biggest gift of them all. Hashem gave us the gift. Hashem gave us the Shabbat. Yes, but listen. Hashem is also part of that picture in your life right now in the present. Hashem is not that one that commanded us 3,000 years ago that we will be observant and keep Shabbat. Not only then. The mission of Hashem, the light of Hashem, the existence of Hashem is not part of the past. And we're following His commandments. Hashem is with you right now. Hashem is that one that chose the video of that rabbi to wake up your soul instead of some different rabbi or different inspiring mentor to talk to you and to take you straight to hell. He chose that path. And in that path, that teacher is telling you, relax, wait, breathe. Listen to the voice of your wife. Why she is afraid. I'm asking you, why 
she's refusing. Oh, stubborn woman. She doesn't want to hear to the voice of rabbis. She doesn't want to listen to the voice of Torah. Listen, maybe she's got her reasons. You know what's her reasons? Her reasons is that you are so not stable that you messed up so many times in your lifetime together that she really cannot put her future and her children on your back because you are not stable. Honey, you're not stable. Listen, your wife is saying, I'm afraid. She's not saying no. She's saying, look, you look more like a question mark than any other thing that I can see in my life. I'm not sure if you're going to hold on in that path. I'm not sure if you're going to stand and support me in the future. I'm not sure if you're not going to divorce me and become radical in a couple of years. I don't know you. I heard some crazy stories about people that start keeping Shabbat. And I don't know what happened with them. Listen, I have responsibility. I have the children. I have my, my work, my job, my boss, my parents, community, friends. What are you talking about? Now, I'm asking you, what he should do? His desire is honest. His will is pure. He woke up. He is talking about Shabbat. And he hears other people talking about Shabbat. And he wants to feel the pleasant of Hashem. But Hashem woke up his wife right now to hold him back. And I say... Listen to the voice of Hashem. Hashem is not here and not there. Hashem is everywhere. Hashem is between the lines. Not only in the line that is commanding you to keep Shabbat or in the line that is commanding you to divorce your wife if because of her you cannot keep Shabbat. There is a huge gap between those lines. And in that gap, you should find Hashem. You should take your problem to a quiet place and to tell Hashem, listen, I want to keep Shabbat. Give me the Mary to keep Shabbat. I want to do it in the right way. I upset my wife so many times. I disappointed her so many times. I don't want to hurt her. I understand her. You know, Hashem, she didn't felt the pleasant of Shabbat. She never tasted the sweetness of Jewish kite, Yiddish kite. She never tasted the pleasant of faith. You know what, Hashem? I will try to make Shabbat more joyful next time. And even if I won't be able to keep it completely, I will try to do something nice. And then you can buy flowers Friday afternoon. And then you can also help with the cookings. And not to put all the burden on her shoulders. She needs now to cook for Shabbat. At least for three meals. If you're not fat enough to eat fourth meal. And she needs to make the house clean. And you want to have guests on your table. It's Shabbos. And alcohol someone needs to drink. And she needs to clean the table. And to help the drunk guests to go back to their house says and if they crashed on the living room sofa so she needs to deal with it because you the big important Hasidish rabbi are already fell into sleep one hour ago before Birkat Amazon and she gonna find herself alone trying to understand how to say Birkat Amazon when you're asleep and she will have to take the kids to sleep and to do Kriyat Shema Alamita with them to take care of the guests to clean the table and to make everything ready for you for tomorrow because you have a second Seuda, right? No, wrong. That's not the will of Hashem. That's not the will of Hashem, period, point. Not the will of the Creator. The Creator is not lousy. The Creator is not cruel on women. The Creator is not cruel on children. And the Creator is not following your stupidity and stubbornness that you want to change and you want to do. Who are you? Who the hell are you? Who you think you are? You're welcome to grow in the path of righteousness, of holiness, of kindness, to be sensitive, to be nice, to be polite, to be respectful, to respect others. To listen to their problems, to care about their hearts, to care about their feelings, to work on your attributes, to be a human being. 
And not to be a Haredi animal that runs over people. That's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is that you will be nice. That you will be good. Now you want to be inspired from the verses, from teachers, from rabbis, from holy books that have been written by righteous ones, by giants of our nation? Welcome. But don't drop the essence of life, the important commandments, derech eretz, way of the land, manners, behaviors, to be so strict with the hours that you need to wake up and chatzot and before of dawn of completing the blessings in a minyan and with 10 people around you and going 8 hours every day learning in yeshiva and that no women will come to the house and she's so rude not covering her head and this and that. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you to run over people? Who are you to destroy innocent souls? If you're going to give her a chance, she will be higher than you, thousands of times higher than you. Destroying people because of your laziness. Found yourself a place to hide in. Find yourself a place to deny and a place to, to, to not to work on yourself. That's not the will of Hashem. The will of Hashem is that we will take responsibility on our actions. That we'll be nicer and better to our surroundings. And then through patience and through love and understanding and compassion, you and your wife together will keep Shabbat and you will eat kosher in your house. Even if it will take another year, even if it will take another five years, In five years, you will keep Shabbat out of joy, out of happiness. Shabbat will be pleasant in your house. And not hell. It will be part of heaven. And Hashem's spirit will hover between you. And you'll have peace. That the Creator couldn't find a better vessel to contain His blessing except of peace. So work on peace. Work on understanding. Build your way of communication. Having deep conversations. Sharing your emotions. Taking responsibility on your lackings. Working on your attributes. To learn how to apologize. How to love. How to care. And Hashem will help you. That all your dreams will come true. And all your prayers will be answered. And you will find a way to convert, to keep Shabbat, to complete your Aliyah to the Holy Land, to live in Jerusalem, to learn Torah, whatever your heart desire, you shall have. But don't drop your family. Don't drop your beloved ones. It's not the will of Hashem. That you will give up on your own children. That you will give up on half of your soul. That you will give up on your wife. That a woman will give up on her husband. That's not the will of Hashem. That's not the will of the Creator. The Creator, He wants you to become better and nicer, more kind, more sensitive. That you'll be able to love more, and to express your love, to respect other people, to be righteous, to be good. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.